Hello and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be starting to deal with a problem that's kind of presented itself over a period of time and that's with the uh, visitors parking area. Let's take a look and see why it's a problem and what we're going to do about solving it. Here is the issue. This is my visitor's parking space and you can see the retaining structure here. I say structure, it's basically some bits of plywood and some 4x2, 100 by 45 knocked into the ground and it's giving way. And at the front of the wall there looks to be a rubber tyre <laughs> right there. Now I can tell you from a little investigation that this entire stretch of wall is made of recycled tyres. I can understand why people would choose to use some old tyres to make a retaining structure. It's free, it gets rid of a, a problematic waste material, uh, and it works particularly well. But it's ugly! <laughs> and uh, for the life of me I can't bring myself to bury those tyres here. They've got to come out and get disposed of. Right, so the plan. I don't want to start pulling this apart and digging trenches until I've got a design that I know is going to work. So the first thing I need to do is design. This is still a useful parking space. Sure it's a little bit dangerous, it could give way at any moment, but as long as you don't park too close to this edge it's actually okay. Check out the lean on this wall. This post should be level or it should be battered back but instead it's leaning forwards. The level is plumb and it's a good six inches away from the post at the bottom there. That's how much this wall has moved over. It's close to failure. So you really need to get this job done right now. So I think we'll take a few measurements of this area and get onto the computer and start working out a design. We just need to take a length and a depth, give us an approximation in terms of how many blocks we might need, a height of course. You now you can see the wall is obviously taller at this end than that end, it tapers down to, to, to nothing uh, and that's because the driveway that I'm on goes down into the valley behind me. Okay. So we'll take a height at one end, take a length, that'll give us an average height so we can just estimate how many blocks we need. All right, that's six meters in length. So we're really talking there, if we're using a standard concrete block, 400 millimeters long, what's that, 16 inches? Uh, we're looking at 15 blocks length. I don't want a square corner here though, but it's an estimate, so 15 blocks in length. And it's about seven or eight blocks uh, width And height-wise, assuming that this is relatively level, we're hovering around the 900 millimeter mark at the highest point. We still need a design. I'm going to get those measurements into the computer and start working on uh, the actual structure, the actual shape. I actually don't want a 90 degree corner here, even though it's a parking space. I do want it to have a curve that I can then tie into the design later. Here's a rendering of the design I've come up with and you can see it's really quite decorative. It's going to be quite a lot of work to get all that brickwork shaped and cut. If we deconstruct the wall, you can see we've got the concrete blockwork pushed forward on the foundation or cantilevered. So the fill material pushes against the foundation, pinning the wall in place to stop it rotating or leaning over. You can see here how the steel reinforcing ties the blockwork to the foundation, making it a very strong system. Once the blockwork goes in place, it's filled with concrete to tie it all together, but here is our starting point, getting the stepped foundation reinforcement in place and then the concrete poured. start on the trench here just getting rid of the loose material against the old retaining wall that you can see there just try and clean up the edge 
And if you take a look at the tape measure here, uh, probably around about 350 wide at the moment. Now I need to go out to at least 650. Foundation is going to be quite wide. It's going to be a cantilevered foundation. Uh, so it does need to be wide. And I'm thinking 650 plus. So you can see where the end of the tape measure is. That's where I've got to dig out. The next job really is to mark out exactly where the foundations need digging back to. Uh, this trench is nowhere near wide enough, so I'm going to mark that out and get some spray paint down as a visual, just with this uh, upside down spray paint, so I know where to dig to. I want this to be a nice curved wall here on the corner with some decorative features in the brickwork, so I've estimated uh, a 750 millimeter radius curve on the front edge here. The other thing I've noticed, this wall isn't straight, <laughs> we knew that, but neither's the driveway. It's not a straight line, and if I build a straight brick wall coming into a curve, it's going to look odd. I'm going to have to build a continuous curve that goes into a tighter radius, a Fibonacci curve. That means I can't use a string line with my brick or block. You know, there are some times that simple hand tools are really rewarding. It's good for you, good exercise, good workout, but sometimes that pickaxe just is too hard. And that's where this comes in. Check this out. It's a rock breaker fitted with a spade bit instead of a chisel. And this is going to make short work of breaking through this rock face here. So after much digging, I'm ready to take this old wall out. I've left it in place as long as I possibly can, just because it's been useful to help contain the loose soil. But I've got to the point now it's actually in the way. Now this has got to be absolutely the best part of any job. Demolition. You can't beat it. tip. When you're building a wooden retaining wall, try and make sure that there's as much material in the ground as there is out. In this case, <laughs> we had 100 millimeters in the ground, 900 millimeters out of the ground. Amazingly, it held for so long. Well, I've got to be honest, that was satisfying, taking out that old wall. Now back to some more hard work, some digging. Take the rest of this earth away, down to the level of the driveway, and then I can start measuring out where the foundation needs to be stepped as it goes up the driveway. So quite a bit more digging to do before we even think about getting some concrete in place. Now, I've opted to use a rotary laser here to project the levels of the wall and work out exactly where the foundations need to be stepping down, and also to determine the exact height of the wall. I'm still not sure whether this existing parking space is level. This laser is going to help me determine that. Now, this is the Agitech A510G, and I particularly like this machine because it can be placed on any surface as long as it's reasonably level, and it will self-level the head, the rotating head of the laser. Now how these work, if you haven't seen them or used them before, is there's a laser projected from this head and there's a motor spinning it. So essentially what we've got is a laser projected in a horizontal plane around a 360 degree rotation. And then I can hold on to this detector you see here and as this picks up the light from the laser, it will tell me whether the laser is higher than the detector or lower than the detector. And so I can vary the height of this detector uh, to get it in line with the laser. Really simple. 
And if I attach this to a long surveyor's ruler, like this one, or staff, that will give me measurements that I can use to calculate the exact height. Well, I'll start off by taking a measurement of the height of this existing parking space. Now, this is at the lowest, let's say, corner, where the wall is at its highest. And so what I really want to determine first off is the height difference between the existing parking space and the driveway at the highest wall position. I'm estimating 900 millimeters, but I don't know. And then I want to know, does the parking space at this corner, does it drop away? Is it level along its length from the roadway or does it drop? And how much it drops could determine and change the shape and style of the wall. So I'm really hoping that this is particularly level. Let's find out. Right, so this is our reference or our datum point. We've got a height here of 1,072. Now we need to remember that or write it down somewhere. Now what does that number really mean? Well, it means the height between this parking space and wherever the laser is, and it doesn't matter where the laser is, the height difference, 1,072. Now, if I just run up to the top of the driveway in the parking space and take another identical measurement, I want it to be 1,072. Will it be? No. My guess? I'm going to say 800. Just a guess. Well, what do you know? 816. <laughs> That's a pretty good guess. So if I take the 1072 measurement of this point and compare it to the 816 measurement of the top end of the wall, that means that the wall actually drops 256 millimeters along its length. Now that's quite a lot when we're trying to get a flat, straight, level wall. Now one option is to actually step the top of the wall as it goes down the driveway. Uh, when I've got these measurements all plotted out, I will punch them back into the computer and just plot it three-dimensionally so I can just see and visualize what's going to be the best outcome. I know what's the quickest to build, but we're not looking for quick. We're looking for different, creative, unique, and hard. Now there's no doubt there's still quite a lot of digging to do on this trench before I'm ready to put the steelwork in and get the concrete foundations poured, but we've got this really large tree root. You can see it's quite big and I'm not sure where it's coming from, I'm not sure what tree it's coming from, but I do know it can't cross through the foundations of the wall, particularly on the corner. Now the corner of the wall is the most vulnerable point. The problem with roots, of course, even if they're underneath the foundation, you might be tempted to leave it in place. It's going to absorb moisture and it's going to cause the ground to swell and shrink. And that's going to cause subsidence and settlement of the foundation and potentially therefore cracking. Also, if the root's still growing, it's going to expand in size and push the wall up, out and maybe even over. And we don't want any of those things. I know where the wall is going to start now at the top of the drive. I know the height of that wall, and I know, therefore, how deep I need to dig at that point. So I can dig the very first foundation step, work that this way until it comes out above ground level, and then step down again and keep on that process until I get all the way down to this corner. Let's talk about stepped foundations. Now I remember the very first set of stepped foundations I ever dug and they confused the life out of me. <laughs> it's very easy to get the length wrong, to get the height wrong, especially if you overthink it. But they're actually very simple. Here's what we've got here. You can see I've got a mark here on the wall that says three. Down here it says two. And that's just a reminder for me of how many blocks length each of these steps is going to be. The blocks are 400 millimeters in length or thereabouts, and we want to make sure that I don't have to cut a block after every step. That would be a lot of extra work. Why not just make the stepped foundation suit the length of block? We also want to make sure that when the foundation goes in, it sits below the level of the driveway. Now the foundation is going to be 150 millimeters thick, six inches, and you can see here on the edge of this first step, we've actually got plenty, about 280 millimeters, about 11 inches or thereabouts. So plenty of thickness there so that we can get the foundation in and it still is below the driveway. However, 
I've already mentioned that the blocks are 400 millimeters in length or thereabouts. That means that this first step needs to be 1200 millimeters in length, which is right here. But I've actually cut it to 1050. And the reason being, I want the foundation to be continuous along the slab and down the waterfall edge of the step and then continue on. I don't want these to be individual pads of concrete. I want them to be joined together, one piece of concrete reinforced with steel all the way through that edge. So I've cut it back 150 millimetres so that once the concrete goes in, it ends at 1200, the end of our first, or third in this case, block. The final piece of the puzzle is how deep each of these steps needs to be. It's very simple. Ignore the mortar bed that goes under the block. Ignore the thickness of the foundation. Ignore everything except the height of the block that you're using. My blocks are 190, therefore my step has to be 190. I guarantee then each of the rows of block work will be in line with each other. So I just hit a couple of snags on this final leg of this foundation. I've cut in the steps to what I believe to be the right level. I haven't used the laser detector and the reason being it's just broken. I can get around this. I can order a new detector tomorrow. In the interim, I can wait until it goes a little bit darker and I'll be able to see the green laser actually hitting these indicator marks on the stuff. So rather than rely on the laser detector to tell me if I'm high or low, I can just read the numbers off the stuff and work it out for myself. So that's not a massive drama. This concrete post that's sticking out of this corner, however, is. I'm going to say that there's a probably a third of this concrete post sticking out and two thirds sticking in. So there's no chance of me pulling it out. Now I could cut through it with an angle grinder. If this doesn't work, I'm going to try the jackhammer. I'm going to put the rock breaker onto the jackhammer, give it a few blows and see what happens. Either the concrete will break apart, fall off, and then I can angle grind through the steel reinforcements or this entire corner will collapse. Well, check out just how much material I've had to remove from this corner and up this stepped foundation. A huge amount, much more than I'd anticipated. And it does mean I'll use a few more blocks and bricks, but that's okay. I've made sure that, again, the foundation is below grade. And by grade, I mean what's going on on the other side when I eventually landscape it. I've got the levels roughed in at the moment. And I also don't know where these foundations are going to begin. I don't know where these steps need to be. I will, once I get some blocks and loosely lay them around the corner, get the corner looking right, and then I can determine where these steps are going to be, cut them in, measure back my four or 800 millimeters, and get these three-stepped foundations finished off. We're really close to getting the steel work in, concrete, block work, brick, and it'll be finished. <laughs> it's nearly done. No, it's not. But the digging's nearly done, and that's what makes me happy. Well, take a look at this. After all of that digging, removing over five cubic meters of material, the trench is finally done. We're ready to move on to stage two of this project. Now in that next step, we're going to be putting some steel reinforcement in, pouring the concrete foundation and getting ready to lay the block work. Now to do that, we need a special tool, a rebar bender, which I don't own. And so in the next video, we're going to be looking at how to design and build our very own. Now, I really must say a huge thank you to all of you who have subscribed to the channel. It really does help out when you hit that subscribe button or leave a comment or give it a thumbs up. So thank you so much for doing that. And thank you so much for watching today. That's it for now. Bye.